Matthew chapter 16 again. Jesus made very few predictions, remember? He didn't predict the end of the world. He didn't predict who the Antichrist would be. He didn't predict uh, who would be president next. He didn't make great and glorious predictions. But he did make one prediction, and we're reading it today in Matthew chapter 16. If you were with us last week, you remember I said something about how God picks. It's not you or I who pick. It's God picking you. God picking you to do his work. And he picks you. He picks people like you to do his work. And it's his choice, not ours. His will, not ours. His will predominates, and God said, I will. And when God says, I will, I can't say, I won't. God says, I will, and he's going to have his way. Well, God makes his great prediction, and if you don't mind, I'd like us to reread those words in Matthew chapter 16. In fact, if you don't mind, let us pick up there uh, in verse uh, 13, if you will find that. We'll get to verse 13 and pick up in this conversation Jesus has. Would you read with me, please? God's great prediction. Here it comes. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? Who is Jesus? Who is he to you? They said, well, some say you're John the Baptist, and some say you're Elijah, and some say others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you? What about you? Who do you say I am? What about you? Who do you say I am? Simon Peter spoke up with the group and answered and said, You are Messiah. You are the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Simon, you are blessed, you son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by the Father in heaven. He revealed it to you. And I tell you that you are Peter. Here's God's great prediction. And on this rock, I will build my church. On this rock, I will build my church. Amen. On this rock, I will build my church. On this rock, I will build my church. On this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades shall not overcome it. This is the great prediction. And in fact, you notice the five words. And if you don't mind, let's just take a minute and look at each one of those five words. This is God's great prediction. And the first word of God's great prediction is I. Notice who is speaking. Jesus says, you are Peter, and on this rock, I. This church is not about me, and it's not about you, and it's not about anyone else. If it is, it will fail and fall. If you are gauging your response to God on how I do, it's going to fail. And if I am gauging my response to God on how you do, it's going to fail. It's not about you and me. Now, we are included in the work, but it's not about you and me. There are no big eyes and little U's. No, there's no, you know, some get more attention than others. That is not the way it is in the church. There is only one person and only one who gets all the attention, who gets the primary attention, who gets the glory, and that's the one who said, I. I will do this. And that is Jesus Christ. No one else is responsible for the final result at Zion Church but Jesus Christ. He is the Lord. And we got to get back to remembering this, that He is the sun in our solar system. He is the foundation of our building. He is the breath of our life. And without Him, we don't have it here. But with Him, it will occur. I, said Jesus, will do this. Jesus didn't say a whole lot of this kind of talk. And when Jesus says He's going to do something, I guess we best sit up and listen. I will do this. Secondly, He said, I will do this. Hey, Tom. Hey, uh, Lindy. Hey, whoever. Would you like to do this? Oh, I might. I might not. Speaking of which, let me throw an announcement in here. Don't forget that bowling tournament this afternoon. Some of you said, yes, I will. Hey, now let's see who's got it. Uh, this coming afternoon, there's a tournament going on, a men's fundraiser bowling tournament. I will or I won't. Jesus said, I will. Not a maybe. How'd you like the way I snuck that announcement in there, by the way? Jesus said, I will. I will. 
When Jesus says He will do something here at Zion Church, it doesn't matter if you or I say, I won't. When Jesus says, I will, that's what's going to happen. The work goes on in the church. The church has been persecuted over the hundreds of years. Persecuted with physical and even death persecution. And yet, Jesus says, I will. The church has been uh, uh, bothered with lukewarmness. You know, people like you and me who maybe kind of grow cold in our love. It happens. But guess what? He still said, I will. The church has been sometimes stopped with uh, bad theology. People kind of get away from the Bible and start thinking other thoughts and saying, hey, this is what is, it's all about. And say, no, 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 it's, not, it's back to the Bible. But he still says, I will. The church has even been sometimes hindered by bad ministers, leaders who perhaps provide a bad example, or perhaps in some way, uh, if you keep your eyes on them, you'll go away from Jesus. And yet, he still says, I will. In spite of that and a lot of other problems, Jesus says, I will do this. When Jesus says, I will, I cannot say, no, you won't, because he will. What will you do, Jesus? Number three, I will build. Jesus in this church is in the people building. Look at your life. The people building business. Jesus builds people. He builds people from the beginning, from the get-go at salvation. And he builds us into Christ's likeness. Look at your life. Are you more like Jesus than you've ever been before? I sure hope so. As a Christian, that's our goal. Becoming more and more like Jesus. More and more full of Holy Spirit. More and more knowledgeable of the Word. He's building us day by day. It's a building. It's an ongoing process. Jesus says, I will build. And I'll build you. I will do it. The, the word in the Bible in the King James is the word edify. The word edify means to build up. And God is in the building up business. He wants us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Savior. 2 Peter 3 verse 18. He wants us to grow in Jesus. And so he's building. And Jesus says, I will do this. I will. I will build. I'm going to build here among Zion today. God's in a building business. I'm kind of anxious to see what he's going to do this summer of 2013, Lord willing. I'm kind of anxious to see what God's going to build among us. I'm kind of anxious to see what building projects is going to happen among us. Again, like I said in the earlier part of the service, some of you guys came in and hadn't been here since we had these renovations. That's exciting. Whoa, look at the changes. Look at all the nice things. Wonder what's going to happen next. Well, all the more so when it comes to the spiritual. Wonder what God's going to do next. We got folks going to India and Tunisia and Egypt, and we got folks going to college here and there and yonder. Wow. I wonder what God's going to do next among us. I can't wait to see what He builds among us. I will build. And then look what He says. I like this word. It comes from the Finding Nemo movie. Mine. 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 I will build my. That's a big word. That's a big little word. When He says my, I take my hands off. This is not my church, okay? If Pastor Lee were in this pulpit, I am sure he would say the same thing. He would say, this is not my church. <laughs> it is his church, not ours. Even Zion, it's not our church. I know it's our church in the sense we come here, you know what I'm saying? But it's not our church to own. We do not own this church. It is his not mine. It is His, not yours. It is His, not ours. I tell you what, one of you, any one of you, if you got a little bit of money, here's what you do. You get that little piece of money and you go, go buy three acres of land. Cool? Okay. And you build a, a building on that three acres of land with that money. You got it? Cool. And then you do all the work yourself. You put up all the foundation, all the walls, everything. You do it all yourself, okay? And you start with zero people. Not a single soul in that building, okay? And you go visit and knock on doors and evangelize and you pray. And you bring people in and you start having people meet in that building, okay? And you fill that building with people. And you fill the, the offering plate with money. You do all of that. And you know what? It's still His church. 
It's not yours. It's not yours and never was, and it never will be my church or yours. This is His church. It's His work. And He says, I will build mine. It is His, not mine. I always pick on somebody, so Hector, it's your day again. I'm not going to go to Hector's house and visit him when we have our Bible study, you know. And I'm not going to show up at his house. I'm glad your wife's not here right now. And say, no, 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 that's not right. This doesn't go here. This goes over here. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I'm waiting. No, that. I'm not going to go to your house and do that. Oh, no, wait a minute. This isn't the right silverware. No, no, no. Let's get the right. I'm not going to tell you how to run your house. It's not my house. It's his house. And even if, and I don't, I'm just, even if there was something that I said, Ooh, I wouldn't do that. Guess what? Doesn't matter. It's not my house. I don't have any right to speak. Whose house are we in today? <coughs> his. It's his house. I don't have any right to tell him. Sorry about the paper, Eugene. I have no right to tell him how to run his house. This is his work. God's doing his work in your life. And in mine, I don't have any right to tell him how to do his business. It's his work. I will build mine. Mine. So no matter how much influence or knowledge or respect the pastor might have, it's never his church. And no matter how much money or time or tenure a member has, it is never their church. It is always, Jesus says, my church. And that's the final word. I will build my church. You guys perhaps know this, but the church means those who are called out. We have been called out from the world. We are a group of people meeting together around the name of Jesus, called out from sin, called out from the world. We are the church. If the church is not the building, it's the people. It's God in the people. That's what the church is. We can meet in that little house there. We can meet at the IHOP. We can meet out in that open field and we'll still be the church. It's not the building that determines whether or not we're a church. It's the people and more importantly, the God who is in those people that determines whether or not it is a church. The church is a mission. I've said this on Wednesday and they repeat it. Because if it's not, then we're just like, no offense, the Rotary or the Moose Lodge or the Elks or the Democratics or the Republican National Parties. But we're not the church. Because if we don't have that distinctive of Jesus Christ, we're just another social organization. That's all we are. But with Him, we're different. You know what? We should be different than any other group of people on this planet. With the Holy Spirit, we should and will be different. We'll be the life changers. We'll be the world changers. It is His church. His called out ones. That's who we are today. <laughs> So you might be sitting there thinking, wow, yeah, I'm glad, yeah, I'm glad he's building me. Hey, let me tell you something. One time I put together a, uh, a gym, what do you call those things, a, uh, um, a treadmill kind of thing. It, back in the day, and it was a treadmill. How do you guys put together things? I like to have the directions. If I have the directions and step by step, I will follow step by step and I'll put it together. Some people don't even use directions. They just look and they fix and they make it. I'm not that kind. Maybe you are. I look at the directions. And the directions say, and, and this is a true story, when I was putting that treadmill together, it said to get an adjustable wrench. I wish I had a picture of one, I'm sorry. An adjustable wrench is one of those things where you do this and it gets tighter, or you do this and it gets wider, and you use it to, uh, to tighten or loosen. And so it's a, I didn't have one. I had a pair of pliers, so I used a pair of pliers. But the, the instructions said adjustable wrench. But I didn't have an adjustable wrench. So I used what was available to me. Just like sometimes if you have a nail and you need to hammer it, but you don't have a hammer, you might get a, a, a book or something and go and hammer it in. It's not the right tool, but you use whatever is available to get the job done. Guess what? 
God's a builder. And he uses whatever tool is available to get the job done. Who does he think he is? He thinks he's God's gift. Who does she think he is? She is. She thinks she's special? No, they don't. But they're available. And God uses who's available to build his church. God uses the tools that are available to do his work among us. And the reason why I say that is some of you might be saying, I'm glad I picked Jesus. I'm glad I picked God. Don't pat yourself on the back too much. Because he didn't pick, you didn't pick him, he picked you. That's who did the picking. Remember my story back in the beginning last week of basketball, baseball team, where they pick? God did the picking. He said, Enoch, come follow me. And Enoch got up and followed Jesus. He said, Eugene, come follow me. Eugene got up and started following Jesus. God did the picking. It wasn't your decision. He made the first move. And he says that in John chapter 15, verse 16. Jesus said, you have not chosen me. I chose you. That you might go and bear fruit. And that fruit would last. So that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give it. A.W. Tozier, if you ever see anything written by him, I'd encourage you to read it. Had a good quote and he said it this way. He said, before man can seek God, God must first seek the man. God makes the first move. <clears throat> Jesus said, I'm going to do some building around here. I'm going to do some building around here. Let me see what tool's available. There's one right there. Here's a tool. Not the camera. You, Lindy. There's a tool. That's available. There's a tool. I need to build a little bit, Mary. And he grabs the available tool. You're available. And he's going to take, and I'm just, I could go down the line here and call any of you you're available. That's who he's going to use. I'm glad God picked people like you and me to do his work. I feel kind of unworthy, don't you? I feel kind of unworthy. Good. Keep feeling that way. That way you don't have to take any credit or glory. It's all to Jesus Christ. Eugene's coming in a moment. We're going to allow God to do some building in us. He's going to build. One way or another, God's going to build Zion Church. He has got His promise before us. Eugene, as you're coming.